Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to be talking all about the different types of urinary incontinence or leakage and tips for managing it. I'm Dr. Alex Hill, your physical therapist for everything oncology and pelvic health. Let's dive in. First, let's start with the definition of urinary incontinence. So this is the involuntary loss of urine. It could be a drop of urine that escapes or your whole bladder lets loose. Again, even if it's just a drop or two, that is still considered leakage if you didn't mean for it to happen. There are a couple different types of urinary incontinence, but first let's talk about the main three. First up is stress incontinence. This is leakage on effort or physical exertion. Examples include leaking with coughing, laughing, sneezing, jumping, running, or other physical activities. Next up is urgency incontinence, which is leakage associated with a strong sudden urge and need to urinate that's difficult to delay. This can happen as you're rushing to try and get to the bathroom and you can't quite make it, or when you get home, put your key in the door and step through the doorway. Third is mixed urinary incontinence, which is when you have a combination of both stress and urgency incontinence. Other types of incontinence include postural incontinence, which is when you leak when you go from sitting to standing, for example, or changing position. Nocturnal enuresis, which is a big way of saying you leak while you sleep. Continuous leakage, which is when you are constantly leaking. Insensate leakage, which is when you leak but you don't even know that it happened. And finally, coital incontinence, which is leakage during sexual activity. Now let's talk about what you can actually do about them. So I'm going to be focusing on stress incontinence and urgency incontinence today. So make sure to subscribe to my channel for future videos on managing the other types of leakage. Stress incontinence is often due to weak pelvic floor muscles and coordinated pelvic floor muscles, lack of support for the urethra and the bladder, but they could also be from tight or overactive pelvic floor muscles. So don't assume that you need to do a bunch of Kegel exercises or pelvic floor contractions because that may not even be the cause for your stress incontinence. One thing you can try is contract your pelvic floor or do a Kegel as you exert yourself. So for example, if you feel a cough coming on, you should contract your pelvic floor as you cough. That way the contraction will help to support the urethra and bladder, give more pressure and closure to decrease or even stop leakage. Most people will benefit from doing Kegel exercises during the day if they have stress incontinence, but again, this may not be the issue. So make sure that you work with a pelvic floor physical therapist for a full workup. Moving on to urgency incontinence now, this is often either due to the bladder lining being irritated or the bladder has learned a bad habit. So first take a look at what you're eating and drinking. Often cutting out bladder irritants can be very helpful. These include things that are acidic, carbonated, caffeinated, Yep, that means coffee, tea, carbonated water, orange juice, soda, alcohol, just to name a couple things. Take these out for a week, monitor your symptoms. If things are better, add one thing back in at a time to see what your dietary triggers are. Beyond cutting out bladder irritants, you can try what's called the urgency drill. This is when you get the urge to go instead of rushing to the bathroom, which honestly makes it more likely that you're going to leak. Stop what you're doing. <sighs> Take several calming breaths and distract yourself. If you don't have any pain or any other reason to avoid kegels, you can also try doing several pelvic floor contractions or kegels. Doing these steps of stopping what you're doing, breathing, distracting yourself, and maybe kegels will calm down those nervous system signals to your bladder. The more you practice, the more successful you'll be. So again, today I just gave a couple tips to help with stress, urge, and mixed incontinence. Always check with your medical provider and pelvic health physical therapist 
for a full workup and individualized plan to help you tame your bladder. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos about managing your incontinence and your bladder health.